Energy is non-recyclable. You use it, it's gone. Where does it go? Primarily radiates into space as heat, but it's gone. Not only that, but energy is the most important natural resource. Now that's a preposterous claim until you start thinking it through. It's the most important because without energy, we can't use our other resources. Look at all of our resource use, whether it's iron, as I mentioned a moment ago, or other materials. It takes energy to get them out of the ground, if that's where they are, or to cut down the trees, if that's what we use. It takes energy to do it. it. Takes energy to transport it. it. Takes energy to fabricate it into something you're going to use. It takes energy to transport to transport it to the buyer. Every step of the way takes energy. So here we have our most important resource. But that's, by the way, whenever the price of energy goes up, the price of everything goes up. Because the price of everything depends on how much energy you use. And if you, the price of energy goes up, it affects the price of everything. And that's why it's very important that we educate the public about this and re have them recognize that this shortage of energy is not something that just happened not something that we can cope with. I, I get very tired of it, people coming to me as a scientist and saying, look, you're a scientist, why can't you solve this problem? Well, I can, but you don't want the answer. <laughs> and so if the public understood better what energy is, how it is used, how important it is, and that you absolutely never can recycle it, we would get at the solution more quickly. And they wouldn't say, well, let's drill more, let's drill more. It's not the answer, it only pushes the problem further down the road. Uh, one last problem, one last issue I just want to mention. It always strikes me that people fail to recognize how energy is used, how prevalent it is, its use is, and don't even think about it. A lot of you drove here, right? I'm fortunate enough to live close by, I walked over, and I'm not saying that to hold it over you in any way. But we all drove here. We drive to work. We drive to the grocery store to get some groceries. Those are all important, legitimate tasks. And you read all the time about how we are using energy to do these things that maybe we should walk and so forth. Well, let me point out the, 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 the real issue here. It doesn't take very much energy for you to go to the grocery store. You could walk in. It doesn't take much energy for you to carry those groceries back home. You're exerting energy, but it's not that much. But most of the energy goes into moving that car from your driveway to the store and back. And if you don't believe me, next time you're going to the grocery store, don't drive there, push your car there. <laughs> and see how much energy it takes compared to walking, carrying the groceries and so forth. Everything we use energy for it takes vast amounts of energy if you're going to move a lot of steel and aluminum down the highway. Okay, these are just some basic points. I was asked to, to uh, make some introductory comments, and I believe, uh, I, I think I've covered all the points you wanted, Aaron. Let me just make sure. How val valuable is energy? Value is determined by the desire of the people to have energy, and that You've seen what's happened to the price of gasoline. It's not just Hubbard's curd. It's because more people in the world want energy, want to use it the same way we use it. And the, the world can't even sustain our use of energy at this present time. But you add China, India, and a lot of other countries that are trying to get in, into this category of major energy users. Uh, the, the Hubbard curve is going to get short very, very quickly. I'm not saying we should deprive them. I'm saying that we should set an example by trying to change the way we do things. Uh, more hybrid automobiles. I hope we can get a plug-in hybrid, although I'm amazed how many people I talked to about this think, well, sure, we solved the problem. We plug in hybrid. Well, we don't burn as much gas, but we're using more electricity. Electricity is generated with fossil fuels as well. So you can't escape the problems very easily. You have to think them through. Thank you very, very much for your interest. Thank you for being here. And uh, God bless you in your efforts. And I hope we can all work together uh, to, to really help everyone understand the issues. And that it's not simple, but it is something that we can deal with if we deal with it in the right way. But we can't drill our way out of it. We can't mine coal to get out of it. 
we have to think uh, very innovatively. We have to try to develop alternative sources of energy. And if I had time, I would show you a little chart I've put together, which I rank resources, energy resources, the same way as financial resources. You have an income, savings, inheritance. Income is entirely solar. If you want to talk about wind, that's solar energy. Waves, solar energy. All, your only income of energy we get on this planet is from the sun. The savings, the oil, natural gas, coal. That's saved solar energy. Solar energy went into helping these things grow. They've decayed. We can now use them in a different form, but the basic energy came from solar. So that's our savings account. Our other account, the inheritance, is geothermal and nuclear. Long-term, uh, available from the Earth, but has to be used wisely and is not necessarily going to be as economical as the other options. So thank you again for being here. I hope you'll join me in trying to live within our income of energy and perhaps dip into the savings as we bridge over to solar, total solar energy. Uh, perhaps use our inheritance a little bit, but let's live within our income the way we try to do with our paycheck. Thank you very much.